Bri? on the 
in there. Go, Preston, you're the ideas, man. No. I've got one fish in. Have you caught anything? Yeah, a lure. That's great. I've caught a lure. You caught a lure, don't spike me. Let's go, let's see your cost. Oh, that could be better, but it's good. Okay. You told me not to do that. We've got a water no, pour up there. This. That's why all this water's kind of darker. But if you're over there, that water's luxurious. It's all blue and nice. I'm going to get out of the dark water. QIT, QIT, this is Nathan. Yeah, there you go. Good afternoon. Thank you. Make it up here. Oh, actually ended up at Stonehaven, sorry. Yeah, right. That's about right. I'll put you at the number one day. Good night. Good night. Good morning. Thank you. Over. A little bit of steak, please, Dad. I'll just try to put boys with your hands. Steak. Just a little bit, please. It's nice to be eating dinner in the sun with not as much wind. Right, Dad, trying to make it look fancy. Nothing better than being at an anchorage that you're not getting blown around and you're not looking at all. Last yo, night I wanted to go home. Yo, We're in the club! Tonight I'm quite happy where we are. Boop, boop. Boop, boop. Stonehaven, heading to Sid Harbour. A bit worried about what we're going to go into with the 30 knot winds, but anyway.
on, Preston. Watch Sterling's throw. Pressure's on, you're on camera. And the sharks are up, so if you don't need it, don't fall. <coughs> so just be careful going in, boys. You don't know what the beldum's like, so just keep an eye, yeah? <laughs> I know I'm a multitasker, right? Get it started before we let go. Have you opened up the petrol? Yeah. Do you want to switch? Chuck it in, please. are going over to what we think is Sawmill Beach to work out how we get on the bush wall since it has somewhat cleared. Over there, moored in there. There they go into the sawmill beach, which is where the wind should be. Passing the little shock. Do not swim, Corinne. And any there. There's four of them in there right now. I don't know. They say six we can go in there, but it goes very slow. Let's just say that. Mum and I are chilling. Just chilling on the boat, waiting for them to come back. Well, yeah, we're taxi too. So there is a little dip at This is what happens when you get your shoes all sandy and muddy. Have to clean them out. Just went to Sawmill Beach, came back. Just finished with our bushwalk. We tried the one to go up to the peak up there. But of course it didn't happen. So we went to a beach around the corner there by going on the far, I can find it. We had to go on that beach. Small cut off. And there's a little walk off that. So we're back here, eating some food, washing shoes out. We moved our boat a bit over, closer to there. Got our anchor down. And we've got all the, the fam just drinking over here. Oh, I wish you just got bright and casty because it was atrocious. <laughs> oh yeah, I know, I saw it, but I didn't get on film. Sterling, so, we've got a Stingos downstairs or some tea tree oil to put on your back. Let's see, can she cast a good? Peer pressure. Yeah. Oh, she's given up. But she's still untangling from the last cast. <laughs> Go away. Shut up. Woo! That was a much better cast, ladies and gentlemen. Brighton actually succeeded for once.
Make sure you put your sunnies on Australia, it's really sunny out there. Boys are going to troll for some fish. Let's see what happens. I don't think much will, but anyway, it gets them out of our hair for five minutes. And the girls are doing what they do best. Bye bye, Chin Harbour. So we are leaving Sid Harbour now, we're going through that channel there. It's still raining, you can see other boats have left through there. Here we go. Leaving Sid Harbour. Not a harbour I particularly wanted to stay at, but actually really enjoyed the stay there. Really nice bushwalk. We couldn't get right up to the peak though. As you can see, we've had a lot of rain, so there was a waterfall that was just too rough and I wasn't prepared to risk us at that point. Can't swim here, that's the only downfall. That was probably one of the big reasons I didn't want to come, but I wish we'd come here over Nara on the first night as it was a lot calmer um, and a lot, uh, yeah, we enjoyed it a lot more. So that is Sid Harbour. And straight over there is Sawmill Beach, which is where you access the tracks. Just make sure you tuck up into that little area. We probably could have went up a little bit further, but had a bit of an incident with our anchor and we're a bit scared of getting caught again on coral.
it just went right back on. <laughs> Just wait, let the judges listen. Straight in. Don't get in Dad's way. Thank you. Yep. Chora. Go, you can go this way a bit more. Okay, you can go there. You can go that way heaps more. Just slow down. Soloway Passage. Hamilton is back over in that direction, behind those mountains kind of thing. And around the corner, very excitingly, and I'm assuming extremely busy for the fact that no one has been able to get here, is Whitehaven. 
Over the other side there is Chalkies. Can't quite see right at the moment. But there we go. You can already see it. Look at that sand. Yeah, there's a couple of boats over in Chalkies. Is he turning? Is he turning? Not yet. Look at that. Oh my God, so much calmer up here. It is absolutely crazy. White Haven Beach. Oh my God, look at that beautiful. Chalky's Beach. Good diving, good snorkeling over there. And of course, as you can tell, White Haven. We are heading to the end of the white sand over there to Tongue Bay, which is just on the other side of that hill. This is Tongue Bay. We have picked up a mooring here for the night. You just go back over there, you walk over the beach, and it takes you up to Hill Inlet Lookout as well as back over towards Whitehaven and Hill Inlet. This is what Charlie yachts, Charlie, a yacht is all about. down the track from over at Tongue Bay going over to Betty's Beach <laughs> Betty's Beach <laughs>
so here we are at a beach in at the entrance of Hook Passage. I think it's like Khan's Beach or something. Um, we've got a nice reef all there, over there, and back over towards there. So we're moored up. I'll go show you guys. We're moored up here. One of them. There's more moors down there. happens when we have to drive the boat it's an outdoor area probably a little small for six people which it is supposed to have but well, there's only four of us now it's been okay we did our own little makeshift clothesline because there was no clothesline that was the best thing we could have done got an extra esky which was good this is where we radio in every day, morning and afternoon. You'll get told a scheduled time and you've got to tell them where you're going. Heaps of storage on this boat. That's one good thing. There goes the radio. Uh, that is our toaster, our kettle. I bought my own somewhat cheap version of a Nutribullet. We brought our own AeroPress. We don't have a microwave. Probably the one thing we probably would have liked. Fridge. Not a bad little fridge. It actually is only little, but it's quite deep. So probably better than what you would expect. For the six of us, we've done okay. Under here, we have another type angle fridge freezer. And we go downstairs. To the bathroom, shower just behind here. Oh, sorry, with a bit of a view, which is pretty nice. Not a very good shower, though. Our showers are terrible, <laughs> you have to pump it, it's just too much effort. So, we all shower up on deck. Toilet, really good storage in this boat. That's one good thing that's been good about this boat is the storage. So, that's that. This is the main bedroom. Heaps of storage under the bed. Again, heaps of storage. Don't mind how messy it is. This is our second last, or this is our last day on the water. Then up and over. And this, I hate the thought. Teenage boys. Oh, not too bad. Again, storage under the bed. Not a bad size bed, they lose a little bit of headroom on us. Um, all our rooms have fans, which considering the time of the year we're here, hasn't been too bad. We just leave the fans running at night. And storage. And we, um, haven't, yeah, it hasn't, we have our portos open. It just, if it rains, <laughs> it's a mad dash at night time to clear, to, Close them. Now this is what we do every day. Open up our magic miles book which is over there and this is our map of the area. So you can see it's all marked out. The black is where you're normally allowed to go. The red is where you're only allowed to go to in the winds. Anyway I'll show you a bit more of that later. This is our chart that we pull out every day, morning and night, to work out where we're heading to. The black line is where you usually can go to, but because we had such strong winds for our first three, four days, we were only allowed in all the red areas, so we were confined to this space here. So we left Able Point Marina, and we sailed out and around we were going to head straight across, but because the seas were so rough, we ended up tucking in behind North Mole and we went through No Passage and then across into Nara Inlet. We actually anchored up in this little area up here and we got stuck the next day for an hour and a half and couldn't get our anchor up. Not a great start to the day. That probably took us two and a half, three hours. But as I said, the weather was absolutely nuts. Um, we sailed from 
Nara around to Strainhaven the next day with the wind behind us. We had a southeasty. Um, it took us probably about an hour, maybe a little bit more. We got a really nice little anchory, a little mooring right in front of a waterfall. Then we so we sailed from Stonehaven down and across into Sid Harbour against the wind again. That probably took us about two hours. Sid Harbour the next day, we came around through here and into Hamilton, which took us probably just over an hour. Uh, we had a night at Hamilton. Our girls flew home from Hamilton. And then it was just the four of us. And after that, the winds had dropped. So we were allowed outside these red zones. So the next day after the, on the Tuesday, we sailed out of Hamilton around and up through Soloway Passage, past Widehaven and into Tongue Bay, which was probably one of all of our faves. Um, that took us probably about an hour and a half. Tongue Bay, we came back to Whitehaven, had a little bit of engine trouble. We were just gonna go back for a swim, but one of our engines actually stopped working and had overheated. So when we left there, we went up to Catarayan Bay, but we were only allowed to go slow to make sure that our um, engines didn't overheat again. Then our last day, we left Catarayan Bay. We came through Cairns Passage to the little beach here, Cairns Beach. And then we had stayed there for about an hour and then we headed back around here and all the way down through here into Sandy Beach, which is where we are at South Mole. Tomorrow, it'll be a quick hour or so back to Airlie and that is it. Last night, Sandy Beach, ain't much sand, but anyway, Sandy Bay, Sandy Bay. sorry, Sandy Bay. Where are we? South Mole Island. Preston, best part of the holiday. Oh, probably Stonehaven. Stonehaven? Or Tongue Bay. Tongue Bay was pretty special. What did we see there? What did we see there? Whitehaven was pretty good though. Yeah. Just went on the right side. No, and it uh, rains killed us. Dad, Craigus. Worst part, not catching a fish. Best part. <laughs> You're so such a <laughs> Sterling. Best time of the holiday. That's not an answer. Five, four, three, two, go. Tongue Bay. That's a, that's a wrap with Tongue Bay, I think. That was the fave. That is Daydream over there. And the rest of Sandy Beach that is all full of coral.
Watch where you ride. Calling and then coming to watch where you're driving. <laughs> Shouldn't be distracted. <laughs> 